Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Sorry for the lack of presence over the last couple of days or so. I've been going through that, what's it called? Sleeping phase. Uh, where people actually get some rest and try and recoup. Um, it's my own little personal hibernation. But I need, oh boy, I needed it. Because I decided today was going to be the day that I reviewed the next episode of Stargirl. And this episode was horrific. I mean, it was actually horrific. We are talking Batwoman levels of terrible. And um, I had to, to, to stop watching it a couple of times, a few times, like three or four times. It was one of those episodes. I even halfway through stopped, loaded up Final Fantasy XIV, did a dungeon... Uh, while leveling my white uh, mage, racist, and then uh, came back onto it afterwards. But I tried to rack my brain initially at the end to say to myself, "What? why was it so bad? What was wrong with this episode? And it was very easy to see why. This week's episode had a distinct lack of pat. It had a distinct lack of Amy Smart development again it had no knock-on effect from the cliffhanger from the previous week there was no repercussion or anything mentioned about the destroyed toaster with the wildcat slashes in them and most importantly there was none of the great villains in this week's episode this week's episode was a Stargirl-centric episode. Lots of her, lots of her clown posse. And when I say clown posse, I'm not talking insane clown posse. I'm talking retard clown posse. And it was awful. Absolutely awful. And it just goes to show how much this show is actually held together by the great supporting cast and the great portrayal of the villains. So let's get into it. We have another almost identical kind of flashback uh, in terms of who's the person here, what they're going to grow up to be, blah de blah de blah uh, that we've had before. We get um, a farmhouse, nice domes. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Mum and Dad come out. They say, hey, son, we're going away. Uh, you're not. Here. Here's a toy of uh, my yellow... Who cares? Anyway, she says, hey, uh, really uh, terrible brother of mine. Look after our kid who we're just telling we're going away now. And uh, this is Dr. Midnight. No, this is our man. This is our man. So uh, you can just tell what's happening. And it's going on and on and on. And when I say tell what's happening, you know that they're going to leave. Because they've left the kid behind, they're immediately going to get killed. So you kind of like, just let's snap through this. Because we know what's happening. But they just won't stop talking to the kid. Oh, we love you. We'll try and come back for you. Hug. We love you, son. Son, son. Don't leave me. Please come back. It's four minutes into the episode. Four. You could have just had them in the car at the beginning. Do you think that our son's going to be all right with my brother? He's really reckless. We have to leave him. We have to keep him protected. His name's been changed to your maiden name. So that's the only way that we can keep him safe. Oh no, Solomon Grundy's. Ah, oh, we did these. That's what we had to do. So the drive away. Solomon Grundy appears in the road, punches the car, the car hits a tree, they die. Bye! Present day. This looks like um like a like a cricket uh you know, where you get dressed. Oh my god, pavilion in the UK with a little You didn't need to know that, did you? No, 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 okay, let's let's keep on going then. Let's keep on going. 
So the kid's working on a life-size model of the car that his daddy gave him. And he's like, I'm a cool kid at school. I've got a really bad receding hairline and I'm only 23. And then he's, um, well, it's not, but it looks in some of the shots, it looks like he's actually receding. And then he's like, where's my carburetor? Where's my carburetor? And his uncle's just like, um, I sold it. And he's like, where'd you sell my carburetor? He's like, because I got to feed you and I got to pay bills. And you're just a mess. You you ruined my life. But left me. We are five minutes into the episode. I'm bored off my tits. That is my face watching the show. Okay. So we then cut to... Oh, boy. Him walking to school because the car broke. He he's got no lift to school. This is the tree that his parents hit and died. He goes up to the tree, he punches it, he hurts his hand. No shit. Oh, so we then cut to Courtney, who sleeps with her door open? Or did her... Yeah, well, no, her brother comes in and uh, scares her with a mask. And he's like, oh, ho hey, uh, boy, let's see, sister, up. Happy Halloween! Uh, am I gonna use this mask tonight in bed when I'm crashing someone up bouncy? And um, I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is episode five, and they're having a Halloween episode, which to me says that this show was never, ever intended to be shown when it's being shown. This was clearly designed. To be put out in the fall season. Just like all the other shows. Five weeks in. It's Halloween. That sounds about right. There you go. We'll see. We'll see in a couple of weeks time. A few weeks time. If we have a, a Thanksgiving or a Christmas even. We'll see. We'll see. But um, this is all meant to have happened. The day after. The last episode. One of the characters mentions it. So something it's just Halloween out of nowhere. No decorations were up before, but now it's just Halloween. Uh, so it's a bit weird that this, someone would do that. Anyway, her mum just walks in. And again, this is, I think, the only time we see Amy Smart again. She's really being wasted. Amy Smart's a decent actress. She's really being wasted at the moment. And Courtney's like, I want to sleep. And everyone's like, it's seven o'clock. You're going to be late. Seven o'clock. You're going to be late. What time does bloody school start? In Never mind. So um, the dog gets into her laundry and she's just dumped her Stargirl outfit. And he starts to drool over some of her boots. And she's like, oh, no, mum, you go out. You leave so uh, I can pack away all the terrible stuff. And then she looks at the hourglass from our man and... Packs all of the stuff together in a, a comically large duffel bag. And uh, Pat's just like, hey, what, what you doing with that bag? And she's like, I'm going to school and it's gym day. It's full of gym gear. It's like that fucking big. Has she got a whole gymnasium in the bag? Anyway, we're eight minutes into the episode and nothing is happening. And then he's like, hey, look at this, look at this. I think that uh, this guy uh, was actually the wizard from the Injustice Society. And that's why he was killed off and whatnot. And she's like, whatever is these, I gotta do my girly things these. And that is pretty much Pat's involvement in the episode. He does a couple of things more, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Courtney dumps the duffel bag in her locker at school. Um, Wildcat's with her. By the way, this actress is 27 years old. I googled it. Because I was a bit concerned after last week's episode. So I googled it. She's 27. 27! And they're speaking comically loud about the Injustice Society. And guess who's listening in on them? Yes, it's retarded girl. I hate this character. I 
is. You can't say that. She's black. I hate this character. She's terrible. This character is terrible. We'll get into more of it in a bit. Um, and I'll tell you why. So they're chatting about the Injustice Society. And uh, she's listening into everything that they're saying because they're being loud. And look, and she's like, I've got AirPods in. I can't hear a thing, Zs. Whatever. So uh, she bumps into the janitor. And I told you, I told you the jan there was something with the janitor. And the janitor's like, be careful, there's dragons in the water or something. I don't know. I don't know. Who he's going to turn out to be, but it's going to be uh, something. Now playing the wrong man. It's the CW. Every man's wrong. Am I right? Scissor, scissor, scissor. Okay, moving on. Um, so the guy who works for the tire place... He's having a meeting with this guy, and he's like, here, here are the diabolical plans that you want for the diabolical thing. And he's like, cool. And he's like, uh, can I get paid? And he's like, sure, have some money. But here, look, I got you a chocolate. A chocolate coin. Eat it. It's totally not going to kill you later in the episode. And he's like, okay, I'll eat it. The car breaks down on the way to school. Courtney, of course, berates Pat because Pat's, you know, a laughing stock. The kid. By the way, we're 12 and a half minutes. <clears throat> the kid uh, walks past and, he, and Pat's just like, hey, you got a nice ass. Can you help me finish my car or something? So they, they have a talk and he talks about his car. And this is where he looks like he's got receding hairline. He's, tr he's only 23. But it's like, how, how these kids are comically too old. But never mind. So he's like, here, I do a little bit of this. I work in a car beretta and I do a ting. And um, then they talk about cars. Nothing's happening! Uh, meanwhile, in the back, Courtney opens up the hour uh, of the bag because the hourglass is glowing. Oh, it's glowing because of that boy. By the way, at school, I now kind of... I brush over things because I'm really not interested. In school, they're talking about who to hire for the Justice Society. And they're just like, why not pick her? She's this. Why not pick her? She's this. And it's just like, why are you wanting to recruit complete strangers who you don't know, don't trust, and have no idea how they would... Never mind. This show is getting really stupid. Really stupid since they're doing this recruitment drive because we got to get the justice society of america together immediately there can't be any organic growth with this can there and by the end of the episode there's two more people who join this episode so she's like oh my god it's him and then the talking still about bollocks and he's like hey dude can you help me push my car and he's like nope and he walks off and i'm not even joking so he buggers off uh, still playing is the wrong man, because you're only allowed lesbians. Um, he turns up somewhere and does a thing. I don't know. He, oh, yeah, Courtney follows him. She gets out the car and says, never mind, Pat, I'll walk to school. I'll go back in the opposite direction. So she, she follows him. Like, how do you not know she's behind you? She's two foot behind you. And he's like, why are you following me? How did you know? You're right fucking behind me we're nearly half we're 15 minutes into the episode not in that many. so she says oh the hourglass it was all is all glowing would you like to be a superhero and he's like get out of here you crazy bitch so uh there's a knock on the door trick or treat uh oh look who it is it's, it's uh, girl and she just walks into the house, just invites herself into the house. If I say me smart, I go, yeah, all right, hey, 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 out! Out! So she's like, I'm a friend of Courtney's, can I just walk around your house? The kid's sticking knives in pumpkins, it's meant to be edgy. He's like, hey, I'm a sticking the knives in the pumpkins, it's like, a really like an edge. This is what I used to do back in Vegas in 26. Oh, my God! And I'm like, 17 minutes and nothing has happened. Oh, Amy Smart's a bunny, I guess. 
So Courtney's like, hey, is your... Oh, yeah, by the way, her thing is that she won't shut the fuck up. So even Amy goes, hey, can you wait for Courtney in the front room? Because you're an annoying bitch. So she's like, yes, I know. Uh, I'm going to wait in the front room. The dog starts eating some goggles, which got left behind, conveniently, by Courtney when she packed the bag up earlier. And for some reason, that was cause for concern for her to follow the dog. Anyway, she just goes snooping around Courtney's room for some reason. Because she knows she's a superhero. So she's just being a nosy bitch. And then she puts the goggles on, right? And this is where shit gets really fucking dumb. The goggles uh, are like Google smart glasses. <laughs> Not really. But they just show everything and pinpoint everything. And they know everything. She's like, who are you? I'm Beth Chapel. Oh, Beth Chapel, born. And it's like every picture on the wall, it's like identifying who they are, her age or whatever. And there's a, 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 an actual voice that's telling her. But there's no headphones or anything. So you've got to imagine that the voice has got to be loud and audible. But then Courtney comes in and goes, Bitch, what the fuck are you doing in my room? Oh, God. She's got a friend upstairs. She's going to your room. And then, and then she's, the, the glasses are telling her stuff and Courtney can't hear it. They're just glasses. There's nothing that's indicating it's telepathy. There's nothing indicating that she's got headphones on. They're just glasses. It's so dumb. I can detect when she's telling a lie. I can detect when she's telling the truth. I can shove a thing. So these, right. So this superpower, this person's superpower is she can listen to somebody telling her things. Do you think, do you think this, this thing could fight for shit? No. No, not at all. Do you think she'll get at me? I can't, I can't say these things nowadays. Do you, <laughs> do you think she would come second best in a fight? Yes. But because she's put the goggles on, and because she's listening to the goggles... She's now the perfect fit for Dr. Midnight? What? That's retarded. But it fits the character perfectly. We're now 21 minutes into the show and I am done. <sighs> so she's like, hi, you're... A Somebody's smoking some naughty stuff outside. <laughs> God damn, it smells good though. Uh, so she's like, "Hi, you're an absolute spanner. Um, don't w wear some cushions around your head because you're weird." So no, Pat turns up and he's like, uh, "Hey, uh, and I bumped into your cute little boy earlier. Does uh, you know? Does he fuck? I don't know." And he turns up and he's like, hey, I bought him a carburetor for his car. And this guy's like, well, I'm comically bad, dude. That's like drinking like a beer, bro. And um, he tries to bond with him, but he realizes the guy's an absolute tool. So this guy is, God, oh, fuck me. They're just like, <laughs> they've got fingers in every pies. And I don't mean that in a hey, hey, ladies kind of a way. I mean it in a... Somebody stuck their finger in an apple pie and it's just covered in gunk. And then they're just putting their hands everywhere and everything's covered in apple jizz. So he's now a what? Um, a prohibitioner? He's bringing kegs of beer to kids' parties now. And they're like, hey, these cost $50. And he's like, yeah, well, inflation, dude, this is now $300. What? And they just get money out. They just get... Do this guy look like... This guy doesn't look like he could 
get a hundred dollars if he did fucking 28 blowjobs in one night on the street corner for American soldiers. This one, this one's got a cute ass. So, they managed to stump up $300, but I don't... F uh. So they carry the keg of beer. All of this, by the way, is to is to set up that the keg of beer is heavy for later on in the episode. That's it. Nothing has happened in 25 minutes. It's an episode of Batwoman. And it's not particularly... You can't say, well, it's character development. No. There's been no real development with Pat. There's no been real development with this guy, other than he's a edgy loner. Wow. We established that in the first two minutes when he was like working on a car before school. Um, no development with Amy Smart. No development with Hey, it's only gone palazzo. Bint girl has got goggles and is listening to them, so she's a hero now. And and Star Girl and and Wild Bint are just going around going, who should we recruit? Let's pick her. Let's pick her. Let's. Nothing has happened. Oh Christ! So they're like. Where's the person that we need to speak to? I don't know. And she's like, oh, I'm going to wear my goggles and listen. My superpower is being able to fucking listen. And so she gives the comical, oh, there's 128 people in this house. 127 of them are minors. 88 of them are intoxicated. So they go in the house looking for the guy. I don't care. I don't know. I can't remember what this is all about. It's shite. Oh, there's some stupid dialogue between bloody Cruella and a bestie. Emo boyfriend's there. And he gets... He, he has an argument with her. He leaves the house. And then he hears. He hears in his head his ex-girlfriend who sent him her titties. Uh, her, her saying jerk and he's like what did you say she's like, nothing so he's developing his telepathic powers this episode is shite it's let's just cram let's just cram 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 nothing is sitting nothing is breathing all these first four episodes of lovely character development gone Gone. This is now CW garbage. Oh, so they find the guy and they're like, here, you're a superhero. Look, this hourglass thing does a thing. We don't know what it does, though. And then she says, I've got the goggles. I can listen. I'll tell you. We're all superheroes, by the way. And he's just like, no, you're not. You're a bunch of stupid girls. And I'm like, he's not wrong. So anyway, the power is... What for one hour of one day, when you flip the hourglass, he gets super strength. So he picks up and crunches the keg. That's the whole setup for the episode. I crunch the keg. That's it. 31 fucking minutes for that. Oh my god. So he's like, screw you, I don't want to be a hero, but I'm going to take the hourglass because it's mine. It's for my real parents. Bye! And they're like, oh, bugger, that didn't go down too well. And then he sees his jerk-off jerk of her uncle hitting on some women, hitting on the barmaid. Oh my god, come over here, I'm going to pat your ass. So he goes and smashes his car up after checking that his hair's not receding too badly. Is my hair receding too badly? Maybe. So he punches his car almost in half. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm still angsty and angry. Oh, oh, shut up. Just shut up. So they decide to suit up. To, to talk to him. I don't. Uh! So he goes to the tree where his parents died. And then look, look, right, look. 
Nobody is here. Nobody is anywhere. Nobody is in sight. Bint girl's just going to appear out of fucking thin air in a moment. And he's just like, I couldn't do, I couldn't say my parents, my parents. And they're like, oh, the, the staff's wobbling. Good. And then Bint Girl just turns up. Whoa, look. Oh, look. Oh, just turned up out of nowhere. And she's like, your parents didn't die. The goggles are telling me that the tires w weren't freaking faulty. And actually, it was um, here. Let me just show you through some shite. And uh, Solomon Grundy actually punched the car into the tree. And he's like, cry. And he punches the tree. Oh, the tree falls down and I don't care. Then we have this truck, which is stopped by a school bus because the uh, headmistress is bad guy. And um, they give the truck to Pat to fix. And Pat's like, hmm, who would have punched this car in half? I guess I might do something about it, but I didn't do anything about the toaster last week. So who knows? Because there's now a complete inconsistency with the writing. And then the headmistress comes around the corner playing a violin, which enthralls one of them and the other one's resisting. So they shoot him later. And then the guy that was given the chocolate uh, is dead because he ate the chocolate. And then, ah, oh, I'm a plantation. I'm clearly trying to be a plantation owner from 200 years ago. I would have had me lots of slaves. And then he shoots the other guy that's resisting. Uh... Pat goes into Courtney's room and he realizes that she's been dishing out the goods because he finds uh, the green uh, lantern battery. And that's where it ends. This show was fucking shockingly bad. Two out of ten. It was garbage. The Courtney has no idea what she's doing. Uh, none of them have any idea what they're doing. And I don't think it's ever going to be played upon, acted upon. I just think they think this is funny. This is how they act. This is good. Uh, Pat, who's the best character in the show, got little to do. And when he was on the screen, he's great. Luke Wilson is great. Amy Smart's had nothing to do for five episodes. She needs some love. She needs some development. She's in great danger of just becoming mum. Enrico, Enrico Palazzo is still a joke. But he's going to become Thunderbolt, isn't he? Because he's going to be the, the gobshite Thunderbolt. Um, Bint Girl with Goggles is awful. <sighs> emo Boy is emo, and he's now our man. There's four members of the team. I couldn't, I couldn't give a shit right now. N Nobody watched last week's episode, uh, last week's review. No one. I got like 14,000 views <laughs> in three days. Nobody cared. Nobody wanted to know. If this video doesn't get any views, I might tap out the show. Because if this is the level of writing that I've got to descend to, to watch again, I can't do it. I lost too many brain cells with Batwoman. I did. Anywho. Hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe. To, I don't know. Follow me on socials and whatevers. Uh, links are in the description box down below, and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye.